Tom's Films present South of the Border. When my dad collected all the reels he'd shot south of the, well, south of Zambia anyway, notice he put his titles on the door of the car. Only he did that later, so that was a different car. This is Alan and Anthea Ryan. They live with their parents in the city of Lusaka on a farm, and we visited them on the way down. Looks like we're having a fishing day with them. And now we've left their place and we're on to Kariba. Kariba, the famous dam, and also at the time the world's largest man-made lake, now I think the second largest, and in some trouble right now because the uh, the dam has been undermining its own foundations with its downpour and it's now in for some repair work. Here we are. This was the dam when it was quite new. The local people said that the river would get angry and wouldn't allow this and after all these years now, this being 2017, who knows, they might be proved right. There's an effort right now to remediate the pit downstream of the dam where the water's been landing from the spillways and undermining the foundations. If it was to go, the dam, dam would really cause serious problems for everybody living downstream all the way to the coast in Mozambique. It would, for one thing, get the next dam in line to overtop itself, and who knows what would happen there. But at the time, it was one of the mighty engineering works of the world, undertaken by English and French designers, engineers, and Italian contractor. This is the spillway water that I'm talking about, that it was digging away its own foundations. And the solution they've come up with is to make the hole bigger um, on the downstream side so that the uh, impact of the water doesn't reflect back toward the foundations but goes downstream. Let's see if it works. Here we are standing on the, standing on the top of the dam looking down at the spillway water. And that's just one of the many spillways. So the goal of this dam was to generate electric power, which it certainly did, but it also created a whole new industry because the lake became, I'm not sure if it was with help or just naturally, it became a habitat for a small fish called capenta, high in oil, lots of calories, and uh, it's caught locally at the dam, dried in the sun, and then sent all over the world, and especially throughout Zambia. Capenta is a staple. The cement was mostly made right in Zambia by the Chilanga Cement Company, which is only, oh, well, maybe the one city north of this not too far away at all, close to the capital, Lusaka. At the time, the countries on either side of the lake were a federation. You could drive freely across there. Now there are customs posts on both sides, and you have to um, show your papers several times to get through the border. When I was in high school, Form 1, that would be, let's see, about um, Form, about uh, the eighth grade here in Canada, I did a research project on this dam. I think, I think the whole class did. There's a Roman Catholic church there because the Italians who built the dam made sure that they built a church first, complete with bells.
So the Italian Catholic Church became one of the tourist attractions people came to see when they visited Kariba. A number of workers were uh, killed by accidents during the construction of the dam. And there, is, uh, there are plaques commemorating them. Sinoya is a town that's uh, just north of the road between Kariba and Harare. We were at a tea room here, and not far from Sonoya, we had friends who had lived in Luantia, but now lived up uh, in Sonoya. This, by the way, is what we call a pocket of oranges. Now, here we have the local chickens in a feeder that the farmer designed for himself. I'm sure he thought the chickens would stand on the outside and feed looking inward, but instead they've decided to stand on the inside and chase out any outsiders. So the little one's not getting much of a look in. He's getting chased away by the big ones. Sonoya has changed its name now. Um, it's Chinhoyi. Just another, another example of where apparently the colonial authorities didn't get the pronunciation quite right and so they didn't spell it correctly. I wonder if modern farm turkeys look like that. I know there's been a lot of breeding. Sonoya was the location of some caves. The um, underground caves, that's me coming up there with one of the children of our friend family that we visited. The caves were a good place to explore. Of course, not very good for taking movies because it's dark in there. But my dad took a couple. You wouldn't want to wake it up. There's other places in Africa where we visited caves too. The Kango Caves in South Africa. That would be the domesticated kind of animal, not the wildlife of the country. Farmers took great pains to keep them apart with fences so that diseases didn't spread from one to the other. The Birkenhof Bridge is one of those we had to cross along the way. At the bridge there are signs telling you how far you are from major cities in the region. Our next stop is going to be near Fort Victoria. Salisbury, the capital city, Umtali on the east, they've changed their names now, and we are about to cross this bridge. Mtali is now Mutare. Salisbury became Harare. Great Zimbabwe was that at that time the name of the ruin in the middle of the country. The entire country is now Zimbabwe. Nobody really knew why Zimbabwe had been built and, or by whom. They knew it was several hundred years old. But uh, at that time, anybody could drive around and even walk on the ruins. I hope that's been stopped now and it's been reserved for archaeologists, but you never know. But at that time, we thought nothing much of it. It was a protected area, but they didn't really say what you couldn't do. So here are the ruins as we saw them in those days. They occupy a valley and an adjacent hilltop. 
There are walls and there are towers. Some thought these were animal enclosures and some thought they might have a religious significance. Conical towers like this are a hallmark of the place. And these curved passageways between tall walls. That would be my mother exploring you just saw. And that would have been my head there. As you can see, the walls are pretty substantial. I'm not sure what they were meant to keep out. The movie cameras of the day didn't adjust to light, so you had to take a guess as to how to expose the entire scene. Not easy when you're going from darkness into light like that. Here we have a disappearing wall. You apparently enter that portal and you vanish to another dimension. But don't worry because you do reappear later, suddenly on the lawn. My dad having some fun with his camera. And now we get to see another construction site. This one don't think it's Kariba. We've already passed Kariba. But this looks like another dam being built. So somewhere else in Rhodesia, I suppose. We're possibly South Africa. We've crossed the border now. We're entering Wiley's Port. So we've made our way across the border from Zimbabwe, as it is now, to South Africa famous set of tunnels in this area, like a lot of mountainous regions in the world. The engineers have had fun digging holes. I'm not sure where we are now. We're visiting a farm, I guess, but I don't know whose farm. Or perhaps this animal might have been near a tea room where we stopped for refreshments. And he may have learned to approach the tourists for snacks. Looks like a storm cloud up on the mountain there. I 
I'd like to see that when it's finished. I don't think it's finished yet. Well, somebody lost their truck. I'm amazed they managed to get it out without running over any of the people that were pulling it back. Could They all managed to get out of the way in time. Because the engine was revving during all that whole time. Well, they got the guy out. He lost a fender. I think it's a 58 Chev there. Well, possibly Pontiac, I'm not sure. Those were the days. So, we are on a very high bridge over the Storms River. And my dad's showing off the fact that he has a zoom lens on this particular camera, so this would have been his second video camera, I mean movie camera first one had two fixed lenses, the second one had a zoom, and I believe an electric motor too. Wilderness is a name of a town actually, along the coast in southern part of South Africa, southeastern part. Most beautiful beaches and waves. And the Schwarzberg Pass is one of the uh, higher mountain passes in that region. It means Black Mountain. So we're at the top of the pass here, looking down at the valley below. And how do we get from where we are down to there? Well, this car is on one of the many hairpin bends between the top of the pass and the bottom. There are a lot of them. And my dad decided to follow him along before we had tried the same thing ourselves. I don't think that car is going unusually slowly. I think he's being careful because the road's still quite steep, even though it is uh, spread out as much as possible by the hairpin arrangement. I think we were just lucky to catch this display of parachutists. 
And here we found somebody's farm and a horse with a foal. The ostrich farm at Oatshorn in South Africa. Those are ostrich eggs. They're actually sold to hotels. You can feed, you make quite a few omelets from one egg that way. And this one is intent on hatching them, gathering them all together, making sure they all get properly covered. Nicely fluffed up, brought back together underneath the feathers, and here we go. We're going to warm them all up. That's quite the egg. You need actually a, a hacksaw to get into an ostrich egg. So the ostrich farm at Oatshorn makes some of its money from charging tourists admission. But there also is a market for ostrich feathers. He's showing off how big the ostrich's throat is. I don't like that. Here's a tourist. There's a watch on her left wrist. Um, she gets on the ostrich. The ostriches try to dislodge riders by spinning in circles. When that tourist gets off, she doesn't have a watch anymore. wasn't noticed until some time later in the excursion. Oh. I guess we're not going to try that again. Must have been a nearby military installation, I think, for so many parachutes to be coming down in one day. Baby ostriches. I got to hold one. At that size, they're manageable. I wouldn't want to try to handle one of the big ones. They're quite strong. Hanging around my neck is my trusty Yashica D camera. Lovely camera. Old twin lens reflex design copied from roller cord. And here's the ostrich jockey. Now they're running down a formal track. It's actual race. Haig was a dolphin who lived in the um, aquarium at Durban.
And here's the diver going down to feed the various fish in the aquarium. Different creatures get different diets. Oh, it's going to be soccer. He's collected all five rings and the big one, and here he comes for his reward. Um Tamvuna River. Revere, it's an Afrikaans title. Not the word umtamvunum, but the word revere. And this is a ferry, and the ferry is hauled across by means of that wire that hangs across the water, and it's done by hand. You get on board the ferry, and that would be our MG1100. And then the engine, this gentleman on the right, starts up and pulls on the wire and brings you to the other side. And here we go. Submersible bridge. These would be underwater during certain times of the year. You just have to know where they were and drive with faith. There were markers on both sides so you could aim your car. And this must be a place we stayed along the way. A bed and breakfast or something. And that's the end of this roll.